Now we can consider changes uh, in supply. That is, we can consider an increase in supply. Suppose the supply curve goes from, sorry, suppose the supply curve goes from S1 to S2. That is, you have increase uh, in the supply curve. If that is the case, at the initial price of P1, the quantity demanded is now going to be Q1. The quantity supplied is going to be out here, uh, Q2. We have a quantity supplied greater than the quantity demanded. We have a surplus uh, in the market. Again, we're going to have uh, competitive pressure to push this price down. Uh, why? Because there are producers out here that have lower marginal costs than the price P1. They're producers who are obviously not selling as many as they would like. And in order to sell more, to get the quantity bought beyond Q1, they've got to lower the price. When the price goes down, uh, the price starts going below the marginal cost of each of these units. Firms that are producing the good are losing money on those units and they start contracting uh, the quantity uh, supplied. As the price comes down, the price goes below the marginal value of these units, and so consumers uh, can gain by uh, buying more. The equilibrium goes from the intersection uh, at of the two thick lines to this intersection, which means that price the price falls uh, all the way to P2. The quantity sold goes to uh, Q3. Uh, On balance, the quantity goes up. That is, the equilibrium quantity uh, bought and sold goes goes up. This analysis leads to the conclusion that if the supply curve increases, uh, the price will be lower than what it otherwise would have been. The quantity sold will be higher than what it otherwise uh, would have uh, been. The last uh, demonstration that we need to make is suppose that you have a decrease uh, in supply. That is, supply uh, goes down, uh, perhaps due to increasing cost of production or reduction in productivity or something of that sort. Uh, we note that at a price of P1 initially, the quantity demanded is going to be a Q1. Again, the demand curve has not shifted. The new quantity supplied is going to be a Q2. In this case, we have quantity demanded greater than the quantity supplied, we have a shortage uh, in the market. And as in the past, when you have a shortage, you have upward pressure uh, on the price. And um, uh, consumers who want more of this good will start uh, bidding a higher price. Producers who want to offer more will start offering more at a higher price. When the price goes up, the quantity demanded starts uh, going down. Why? Because as the price uh, goes up, the price goes above the marginal value of these units and consumers are, will be better off by restricting uh, their consumption. The equilibrium goes from the intersection of the thick lines to this intersection or the new equilibrium is established at price uh, P2 and the new uh, quantity is going to be Q3. The net effect of this reduction uh, in supply from S1 to S2 is that the price will go up, uh, the equilibrium price will go up, the equilibrium quantity uh, will go up. We know here that the uh, price will go up by more than it otherwise would given this shift in supply. The quantity will go down uh, by more than it otherwise would be the case uh, because of that shift uh, in supply. The lesson to be learned in this analysis is that if in fact you have a change in some factor that determines the position of the supply curve and or the demand curve, uh, the price and quantity are going to, to change. What's important about supply and demand is that you can use the equilibrium intersection price as a reference point, the starting point. Then you can deduce whether or not a change in supply or demand uh, causes a shortage or surplus uh, in the market then you can reason your way through uh, to an understanding of what happens to the equilibrium price uh, and, and quantity. Uh, thank you for being with me.